SpaceX just leaked something massive. Raptor 4 will hit 330 tons of thrust per engine, pushing Starship past 10,890 tons at liftoff. That's nearly three times Saturn V's power. But here's what doesn't make sense. While most rocket engines get more complex as they get stronger, Raptor 4 is going the opposite direction. Fewer parts, cleaner design, higher performance. How does SpaceX pull off more power with less complexity? And what does this engine unlock that Musk isn't telling us yet? Let's start with something most people overlook. When you look at a rocket, you see the massive tanks, the sleek body, the impressive size. But that's not where the real cost is hiding. Rocket engines account for up to 70% of a launch vehicle's total price tag. A $100 million rocket? $70 million of that is just the engines. And even after spending that fortune, there's no guarantee those engines won't blow up during testing. So why would any company willingly walk into this nightmare? Most don't. United Launch Alliance buys their engines. Smaller launch companies outsource to suppliers who've already burned through years of failures and billions in development costs. It's the smart business move, the safe move. But SpaceX looked at this impossible challenge and said something completely different. We'll build it ourselves. That decision alone separated them from nearly every competitor in the industry. Their answer to this problem is Raptor. Not just another rocket engine, but one running on liquid methane and oxygen using full-flow staged combustion. Before SpaceX flew this design, exactly zero companies had ever made it work reliably. Experts called it too complex, too risky, borderline impossible for operational use. But SpaceX needed three things simultaneously, massive power, extreme efficiency, and complete reusability. Only this design could deliver all three. The question is, was the risk worth it? The first attempt was Raptor 1. It punched out 185 tons of thrust and operated at over 300 bar of chamber pressure, numbers that left most existing engines in the dust. But Raptor 1 was a beast to handle. Heavy, complicated, covered in exposed plumbing that looked like it belonged in a sci-fi movie, not a production rocket. The engines were temperamental. Heat and vibration could shut down entire test campaigns. Building them was slow. Costs ran high. Reliability was questionable at best. Here's where SpaceX made a move that shocked the industry. Instead of incrementally fixing Raptor 1, they scrapped most of it and started over. That gamble became Raptor 2, and the improvements were staggering. Thrust jumped to 230 tons per engine, a 24% increase in raw power. But power wasn't the real breakthrough. SpaceX stripped away the complexity. External pipes vanished, components integrated directly into the engine's structure, the result was cleaner, more compact, and dramatically more stable during firing tests. Raptor 2 still weighed around 1,600 kilograms, far from perfect. But it achieved something nobody else had. Mass production of full-flow staged combustion engines. Once the design stabilized, SpaceX cranked out roughly one Raptor 2 per day. Read that again one of the most advanced rocket engines ever built, manufactured daily like cars rolling off an assembly line. This is what allowed Starship to fly with 33 engines on a single booster. Without this production breakthrough, none of what's coming next would even be possible. Now we hit Raptor 3, and the philosophy shifts again. Thrust climbs to 280 tons per engine, but the real story is what SpaceX removed, not what they added. Fragile components disappeared. The engine became tighter, more integrated, more bulletproof. Mass dropped to 1,525 kilograms. That's only 75 kilograms lighter than Raptor 2, 
but multiply that across 33 engines and you've just cut 2,475 kilograms from the booster. That's nearly 2.5 tons of dead weight eliminated. With Raptor 3, Starship's Super Heavy Booster generates 9,240 tons of thrust at liftoff. Saturn V, the legendary moon rocket, 3,400 tons. Starship already delivers nearly triple that power. We're witnessing the most powerful rocket ever constructed, and it's still evolving. But here's what keeps engineers up at night. If Raptor 3 is this powerful, what happens when SpaceX pushes even further? That's where Raptor 4 enters the story, and this is where things get wild. Musk himself dropped the hint during a Starbase discussion, casually mentioning a future Raptor variant hitting 330 tons of thrust at sea level. He didn't officially name it Raptor 4, but the numbers don't lie. Jumping from 280 tons to 330 tons isn't a minor tweak or software update. That's a 50-ton leap per engine, an 18% increase in thrust. At that scale, you're not upgrading an engine. You're designing a new generation. Let's run the math that changes everything. 33 engines at 330 tons each equals 10,890 tons of total liftoff thrust. That's roughly 24 million pounds of force launching Starship off the pad. This isn't just about breaking records. This is about crossing a threshold Musk has targeted for years, exceeding 10,000 tons of liftoff thrust. Even with Raptor 3's impressive 9,240 tons, Starship sits below that mark. Raptor 4 smashes through it. Why does this number matter so much? Higher thrust means more than just bragging rights. It gives SpaceX operational flexibility during ascent. It creates stronger safety margins for super-heavy payloads. It allows them to improve reusability systems without sacrificing performance. Every extra ton of thrust is another problem solved, another mission unlocked, another limitation removed. But raw power is only half the equation. Musk revealed that future Raptor vacuum variants could reach 380 seconds of specific impulse. For context, that's exceptionally high for any methane engine ever flown. Specific impulse measures fuel efficiency, how much thrust you extract from every kilogram of propellant. Higher ISP means you can carry more payload without enlarging tanks or burning more fuel. It's the ultimate performance multiplier. If the sea level Raptor 4 hits 330 tons, the vacuum optimized version could reasonably exceed 350 tons of thrust. Achieving this likely requires larger expansion nozzles, higher chamber pressures, or both. SpaceX has already pushed combustion chamber pressures far beyond industry standards, and there's no evidence they've hit a ceiling. The question isn't whether they can go higher, it's how much higher before physics says no. But here's what separates Raptor 4 from everything before it. Radical simplification. From Raptor 1's tangled mess of external plumbing to Raptor 3's clean integrated design, SpaceX has been on a mission to eliminate complexity. Each generation removes parts, reduces joints, cuts leak paths, and destroys failure points. Raptor 4 takes this philosophy to its logical extreme. Industry insiders are speculating about something extraordinary, a near monolithic engine design where major components integrate into a single structural unit. Whether SpaceX achieves true monolithic construction or not, the direction is unmistakable. Fewer parts don't just mean lower costs, they mean higher reliability, faster production, easier inspection, and simpler repairs. When you're building hundreds of these engines, every simplification compounds across the entire fleet. This is the paradox that's blowing minds across the aerospace industry. Conventional wisdom says more power equals more complexity. Bigger engines need more parts, more systems, more things that can go wrong. SpaceX is doing the opposite. They're increasing thrust while simultaneously making the engine simpler. 
It's like watching someone break the laws of engineering right in front of you. And that raises the final question nobody's answered yet. What mission requires this much power? China's latest rocket just missed its landing by two kilometers. On December 22nd, the Long March 12A performed a textbook ascent, separated stages cleanly, and started its return to Earth. Then everything fell apart. Despite years analyzing SpaceX's every move, despite copying their designs, China crashed again. What makes SpaceX's landing system impossible to replicate? And with Chinese startups now planning to catch rockets with tower arms just like Starship, could their desperation to close the gap end in catastrophe? The mission started like any other Chinese launch. At 9 p.m. on December 22nd, Long March 12A roared off the pad at Dongfang Commercial Space Innovation Test Zone. The rocket climbed flawlessly, engines burning precisely as planned. Stage separation occurred right on schedule. For those first few minutes, everything looked perfect. But this wasn't just another satellite delivery to orbit. China had bigger ambitions this time. The real test came next. After separation, the booster flipped around and ignited its engines for the return journey. The target? A landing pad 250 kilometers away in Minchin County, Gansu Province. This was China's attempt to prove they could do what SpaceX makes look routine. Bring a rocket home intact and fly it again. The cameras captured striking footage during descent. The engine glowed intensely, exactly what you'd expect from a controlled burn. White vapor streamed from the booster, creating dramatic visuals that suggested everything was proceeding normally. But observers noticed something unusual. That same white plume effect appeared on the upper portion of the booster, nowhere near the engines. Was this normal? Or the first sign something had gone wrong? Here's where the story takes a turn. Despite all the preparation, all the years studying SpaceX's techniques, the booster slammed into the ground two kilometers from its intended landing zone. Two kilometers. 